I'm down today by the Ping River at a beautiful coffee spot called Empire Coffee. Welcome to Coffee Trails Thailand. Somebody cup. Honey, Do you have your coffee menu? Oh, oh, this is very swanky. Look at this. This is the cold brew experience I'm getting here. Baristas always seem to be dressed in black somehow or the other, I'm not sure why. I mean, coffee does come black, but it's not really black, is it? It's more like dark brown. So, I'm just waiting for my coffee to come and I find this little door leads down to the river and I go in here, come around Thank you Wow, look at that there's a big ice ball in there. I've got my coffee number nine. How about that? Fabulous. And I've got this beautiful little view to take in as well. People fishing over there. Also coming. Oh, look at that. Goodness me. Thank you very much. It's my breakfast. Okay, well, I think I'll shut the door, have a little bit of privacy here. So, yeah, here I am with this lovely coffee. I don't know if you need to shake it actually, maybe it gets down the bottom somewhere. I'm saying lovely coffee, I mean I've got no idea if it's lovely. Uh, feel like back in the old prohibition days, or back when I was a young teenager, sneakily drinking out of the bottle. Ooh, interesting. I'm going to tip it in my cup that has rosemary and the like. Yeah, very nice. Mmm, and almonds, lovely. So, <coughs> being down here by the river reminds me of, uh, of this time that I lived in Gravesend in Kent, which is just outside of London, about one hour or so. Um, 
Gravesend is on the River Thames. Famous for having Princess Pocahontas buried uh, in the cemetery there. Uh, she died somewhere near Gravesend. There's a kind of bit of a myth really about why Gravesend was called Gravesend. Uh, some people say it's because they put all the plague victims from the London Plague inside. Um, inside, They dumped them in the river on the Thames there. But for our purposes, some uh, back in 93-94, um, I was uh, married. I had uh, three children at that time. And a friend approached us, uh, Julie, uh, and her husband, Will, uh, approached me about helping them have a baby. Um, it, they discovered, they'd tried for a long time to have a baby, but they discovered that he had, um, he had, I don't know, he was firing blanks. There was something wrong. Something wasn't quite right. He was completely jaffered up. So he, uh, they asked me if I would help them. Now, initially, I thought, what? Help you? Uh, help you with what? In what way? Uh, and because I thought it might mean doing the deed, you know, as it were, with, with Julie. And, and she was a lovely person, but not someone I was attracted to, uh, particularly. But rest assured, it wasn't anything like that. They invited me after I'd, after I'd agreed and said, well, I think I'd be okay with it. Um, especially seeing a child running around that, you know, I had something to do with. Um, and so um, we went to a place called the Brook Advisory Centre, which is in London, had a chat with a psychologist. And when we walked away, we came away. She went away with these things called turkey basters. And, um, and I uh, walked away with some pots, uh, quite large pots, actually, I might add. And uh, these pots were for me to uh, place my... Um, sperm. There's nothing else to call it, is there? Sperm. Okay, so I was to put my sperm in there. Um, so what would happen? They would uh, they would call me when it was uh, when it was she was ovulating, so when it was time, and I would I would do what I had to do in order to fill up a pot of uh, a pot uh, for them. Now the interesting thing is Gravesend has a ferry and they lived in a place uh, in called Grays which was just near a town called Tilbury which also was on the River Thames and so the quickest way to get everything to them was actually going to be to <coughs> put, take it across on the ferry. So they would call me, I'd do what I had to do and I would uh, go down to the ferry, meet Will hand him over the pot and he would go off and do what he had to do um, and so this went on several times they would call me i would go off to the bathroom do what i had to do you know uh, it, it's nature you're helping people and um after about i don't know five or six times of me going down to the ferry the skipper of the ferry pulled us aside and said right he said the police are on to you I said, why? He said, I'll tell you why. He said, I won't have drug dealing on my on my ferry. And I said, oh, no, no, no. I said, it's not drugs. I said, it's sperm. He said, what? At that moment, the police, a police officer, uh, there was a lady and a man, tapped me on the shoulder and said, what, what's going on here? Uh, and I, before I could explain everything to him, he grabbed the pot off of me um, and took the lid off and sniffed it and he reeled back a little bit and went oh my god he said that smells like and i said that's because it is uh and uh and um there was a bit of laughter and fun and embarrassment on on everybody's side the approximately 50 people waiting at the ferry all found this highly amusing because they watched it all unfold and um and so off we went and uh, we we carried on that batch ruin by the way we carried on trying for quite some time and now and again in the town people would come up to me and say oh any news yet i saw you down at the ferry you said uh, everything okay is she pregnant yet and i'd say no not yet and they go go oh, well you need to you probably need to do it more often well i was wearing myself out to be honest and um and so after about five months of uh, going backwards and forwards on the ferry every time it was ovulation time um i got a phone call from from julie and she said to me, uh, we're really sorry, but we're gonna give it up. 
And I said, why is that then? And she said, because, well, I don't think it's working. And, and Bill's beginning to feel, sorry, not Bill, Will, is beginning to feel uh, a little uncomfortable. Will's beginning to feel a little uncomfortable with it. So um, I think we're going have to have to stop. And I said, OK, fair enough. That's your choice. I'm happy to, to, have, to have helped you and tried to get this done for you. So about two weeks went by when my then wife said to me, oh, I've got something to tell you. I said, what's that? And she said, uh, Will and Julie have had a, a big split and they're, 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 they've separated. I said, why? I said, what, because they can't have a baby? And they said, N and she said, no, it's not really that they, because they can't have a baby. The reason is, she said, none of your sperm reached Jules. And I said, what, what happened then? I said, why not? She said, apparently, Will was tipping it out in the toilet on the ferry and putting his own in there. He couldn't bear the thought of his wife carrying carrying a child that had come from one of my little swimmers. I said, oh my God, I said, that's bloody terrible when you think about it. I said, I've been doing all this for five months. And she said, I know, I know, it's really bad. About a week later, Jules calls me and she says, I'm really sorry about this. And I said, well, it's not your fault, you weren't to know. And she said, uh, Will and I are back together now and we've talked about it and everything. And, and uh, she said, I would guess I was being a bit selfish, etc., etc., etc. And uh, so and that was the end of it. I never, I never managed to, uh, to help them get a baby, which is a, a bit of a shame, really. A um, couple of weeks later, we invited them to dinner just to forgive them. Now, Will and Julia were, um, Julie were uh, vegetarians. So I used to make this kind of uh, uh, a burger mix uh, for, um, uh, made out of um, soya and stuff like that. And so, uh, yeah, we invited them over to dinner. Uh, and uh, they had my delicious um, burgers uh, and everything was forgiven and forgotten yeah so back to my coffee very nice too mmm delightful